Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to do a bake with me and we're going to make Christmas cake. I first heard about this Christmas cake idea, I think it was on the Hillbilly Housewife. And it was a little bit different and I made some changes to it. Today we are going to bake the bottom layer, the first layer is what I call it, and it's the bottom layer. And it is a devil's food chocolate cake. Now my friend Mia has been wanting this recipe and so I'm gonna make this video and kind of show her the method. Um, I got this recipe from this cookbook. It is the 12th edition. The newer editions have a different recipe. So, okay, so that's in the freezer, getting nice and cold for us. The next thing you need, okay, do you remember the cake sifters where you like squeeze it like this and your hand gets so worn out? I don't do that anymore. I buy these little screens and put them over a bowl like this okay so let me get my dry ingredients ready here's my flour we're going to put this in here i have the cocoa powder here and this is the baking soda and the salt all of this gets sifted together and thoroughly mixed first I find that getting the uh, things through the sifter works best with this guy. So a devil's food cake is a very rich chocolate dessert. It is my husband's favorite. In fact, it's a lot of people's favorite that I make. Um, I make mine moist which means that it is slightly undercooked, just a little bit. Not everyone likes it that moist. Some people actually like it what my husband would call burned, and that is just a little more dry and probably more what the recipe intended. But my husband doesn't like it that way, so I do it the way he likes it. Guy is going to help me with this so you can see how I do this. Maybe he will. Anyway, we're just stirring that around like this. The cocoa powder tends to get very clumpy. So that's definitely the hardest part. Sometimes I got to take my spoon and flatten them like this. See? And then they go through. And that is the fastest way to sift your stuff together. And then just give it a good mix. Thank you, camera guy. All right, I like to use a glass bowl so I can tilt it up here and look underneath it and see, do I have too much white stuff? And I do. So we're gonna mix that in really good. so it's all consistent as much as possible. Now when Mia had these, I made them into cupcakes. And the reason I've been making cupcakes so much is because we bought a fixer upper house and my oven is extremely small and I cannot fit three cakes in my oven anymore like I used to be able to in my old house that we rented. Okay, so the bottom of that is much better. It's consistent. Put that to the side. This will be over by the sink. All right, now that that is done, we're going to take our shortening and we're going to cream this in our mixer. I prefer to use a stand mixer. So, we'll pull this out. 
I use the paddle for the cakes, not the whisk. And you would think I would have had all my stuff over here beforehand, but I didn't. I got close though. So, Crisco sticks are a little bit more expensive, but I like to use them because they're much easier to man uh, measure. But there was a time where I did not buy anything that was considered a luxury. Alright, so this goes on high so it gets really, really creamy. down. This KitchenAid mixer is an original Hobart before Whirlpool bought out KitchenAid. So it does not have all of the fancy stuff that some of the new ones have. But I love it anyway and I wouldn't trade it for anything. Alright, next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the sugar and we're going to cream the sugar in here and it's going to look like a white sandy beach on the inland coast of Florida. It's going to be great. time for good measure. Okay, maybe my camera dog can help us again. Maybe he won't. I don't know. I guess not. Anyway, it's very, very cream together, white and sandy looking. Kind of a moist sand. Alright, so next we're going to take the vanilla and we're going to blend that in really, really good. I like to do the vanilla next um, because it's wet, but also the longer the vanilla is in there melding with the fats, it just enhances the flavor better. white vanilla to try to keep the white as pure as possible but this will be turning dark brown and it's going to represent the uh, sin curse that the world is under if you believe in the Christian Bible um, which I am a Christian so I definitely believe that that is why it is our first layer of our Christmas cake that was really good and mixed. Now we are going to add our eggs one at a time and get them completely combined before we add our second egg. If you're not that confident at cracking your eggs, then use something like this to make sure you don't get eggshells in there. These measuring cups are so cute. My mom got them for me. It's a lemon. Here's a third a cup. Alright, so my mixer has only even number settings, not odd numbers. On the very first egg, I usually use the six for just a couple of minutes, as you might have heard or seen there. Not really a minute, it's just seconds. In 
until that egg is totally combined in there. And for the rest of the making of the cake, I do not exceed four. If yours has odd numbers, you could possibly go up to five without overworking your cake. All right. What is your favorite Christmas dessert? That's what I want to know. Let me see if I can bring y'all with me for a minute. Alright, here we go. That is what we look like with our eggs in there. You can probably see like right there. It was really white before with sugar in it. I'm gonna try to put y'all back now. Hopefully I can edit some of this out. My editing skills are still not the best. All right. For the next steps, we're gonna alternate the water that we have waiting for us in the freezer and our dry mixture that we made. So I really don't have a rhyme or reason to how I do this. I kind of eyeball it, but I try to do about four cycles usually. Alright, so I'm going to start with that much, however much that was, and mix that down in here. Scraping down the sides, the flour gets stuck to the sides a lot. So I'm going to scrape all that down, try to scrape our paddle off. Make sure you get it all the way down at the bottom, unless you have one of those paddles that has that scraper thing on it. And it will scrape for you as you spin your paddle. I'm sure if I bought a new one, it would fit. Probably, but this works, so I have it. We'll have another one. All right, once that looks good to me, I just go ahead and get the water out of the freezer. And I pour about a third of a cup of the water in there while it's running on stir or the very lowest setting of your mixer. Usually after adding the water, especially if you did not over add on your flour portion, you don't have to mix it again after scraping your sides down and you can just go straight to the flour. If it seems too thick or like it's not mixed in well, then definitely mix it again. Earlier you might have saw some of that poofed up. One of the ways that you can help minimize the poof when you start your mixer again is by mixing it a little bit. Okay. 
this way before we get started. And we have a little less of a oomph of the flour. I don't know if y'all can hear my dog snoring, but he's totally snoring over there in the living area on his bed. So, sorry about that if you hear him. This is going to need another... up until the time I moved out and then I started cooking by myself every single day. Some people say that's why my husband married me so he wouldn't have to cook anymore. There might be a little truth to that, I don't know. And then we'll bake it. Okay, the next question is, did your mom let you lick these when you were a kid? My mom did, but I don't let my kids. All right, now you're gonna take your measuring cup that you used for the water, and you're gonna use it to measure out the batter so that each one of your layers is as even as it can be, okay? four cups in here. Pretty confident anyway. So let's go with two cups. I cook a lot for our church, baking the desserts. And so normally I double the recipes. And that's part of why I got the KitchenAid so it can hold a doubled recipe. So I don't always remember how many cups when I'm just doing a single recipe. Let's see what we think. I think maybe maybe three quarters. Call it three quarters. Might be closer to a cup. I'm not sure. Alright, so these are going to bake in the oven on 350 for the nine inch rounds for about 24 minutes. But keep in mind that your oven temperature is going to vary oven to oven. So if you are making it for the first time, you might want to keep an eye on it, especially if you're, <coughs> excuse me, um, I have a thyroid tumor and it is very big and it 
pushes on my esophagus and my windpipe, my trachea. I am about to have surgery to have that taken out, um, but in the meantime, I kind of sort of choke for no real apparent reason to those who are standing around me. So that's what that was. Sorry about that. All right, so I definitely got closer to one cup in what I just poured in, and this right here is closer to a half of a cup. So, really try to scrape this down and get it closer to a cup. If you're making this just for your family and you're not making it for like a big party, it really won't matter that much. Um, but it makes it easier if you don't have to do as much leveling later. Alright. Well, that's pretty close. I used to never level my cakes. And I would just let them be lopsided because I didn't want to throw away the little top that I had to cut off. Because that was less cake for me, you know? Alright, I will be back in a few minutes. And you can, well, actually, it's going to be like 20 minutes, but for you, it'll feel like just like a blip of time. We're going to put these babies in the oven, and I'll show them to you when they come out. And while we're waiting, I'm going to clean up my mess. Okay, so here they are out of the oven. You can see with this one that... My oven doesn't sit quite flat, and so it's all poofy on this side. Okay, um, this one is just ever so slightly overdone. This one is what my husband would call perfect, and it is just ever so slightly underdone. All right, I'm going to show you the toothpicks so you can see. Okay, this is from when I checked them here at 24 minutes. And you can see that it was still pretty much batter down in the center of the cake. This um, second one right here, see how that is just ever so slightly doughy and then it has that crumb right there. And then this one is pretty much all crumbs. This one was the one that's real lopsided that was on the bottom. This one right here was on the top. And that's how my husband likes it. So there you go okay guys so that is round one it is the devil's food cake and it represents the sin curse and that's the whole reason that jesus had to come in the first place and i know that he probably wasn't born on december 25th but that has kind of become known as the universal day that we celebrate his being born and so we came up with the idea for Christmas cake after reading through some things that the hillbilly housewife had. I'm pretty sure it was her. And my husband and I talked about it, came up with some different recipes that we wanted to use and some different Bible verses and stuff. I'm going to share all of that with you on the last day when it's all completely put together. Um, but yeah, this represents why Jesus had to come in the first place. If there wasn't a sin curse, then there would be no need for a savior. And so that's what this bottom layer is all about. And we chose the devil's food cake to resem res hold on. resemble that because, um, or represent that, that's what I was trying to say, because of its name and its color and it's very rich and tempting and all of those things. So I hope you will join me tomorrow when we do round two which is going to be a red velvet cake. Yes. And so you could probably guess what that's going to represent tomorrow. 
and I will see you then. If you're new to my channel, I'm so happy to have you here and I would appreciate it if you would subscribe and hit the bell and join us for more videos. Thanks. Bye.